the subjects of what we'll talk about will probably, you know, you, you just shoot them at me. You know what you want to talk about other than J. Cole and all that. We'll talk about that, though. Okay. But. Oh. How do you, um, how do you feel I guess I'm going to ask you. Okay, so you heard about how the net neutrality ended thing was supposed to start today? Oh, it was? Yeah, like according to like an article I read a few weeks ago or a month ago or so, it's supposed to end the day. And so people were telling me it wouldn't go into play right away. It would take time. Yeah. And I'm like, what would that look like? Even with 5G, data, like how fast can you? Yeah, we shall see. You know, I'm not fearing the future. I'm not fearing it at all. But a lot of people are, you know, um, shook about, you know, the things that have been being toyed with us in our minds. And, you know, just like the fear propaganda of 5G and all of that. Like, God damn it. Like, um, um, (laughs) The whole 5G stuff got people shook, you feel me? Like, their mind's gonna get exploded and, you know, um, be exposed to all of this radiation and all of that. But I have my thoughts about that. You know, it's like, you see Obama out in the open. You see Rothschilds out in the open. You see Rockefellers. If that's the case, then they would be affecting them as well. They would be in 5G areas as well. So, it doesn't make sense for them to put themselves in that type of danger if they're going to let that on the, on the public and their um, family members are doing the same walking around in 5G areas so it's you know something to think about with, with that but with net neutrality I think it will eventually come into play but I think the people have to accept it first if there's a lot of backlash towards it I don't think it will be able to go through so if the people accept it then I don't think it can go through yeah that's very true that makes me think about how uh, generation anything go they don't fight nothing like even with the uh like the school walkout shit oh, it yeah. took place in my school like Damn. It, they're like I don't know it's like they're so controlled that they don't stand up for themselves and like you really want them to take your fucking protection away like come on now like so if they take your gun away you can't even protect yourself against them like fuck the same Other people, citizens. the same young teenagers who will joke around about Bush did 9-11. But, yeah, you want them to come around and take your guns away. And, you know, exactly. protesting Columbine, my nigga. Why the fuck are y'all protesting Columbine, bro? Have people even right. done research on Columbine, my nigga? Like, you know how rare right. shit like that is, bro? Like, and it's, it's, if they really did research, they would find out. That was the original first crisis, you know, you know, that situation. That was the original one, you feel me, of the 90s. So, it's, it's like, you know, kids don't do research, a majority of them. So, yeah, when, when shit like that goes down, you see people are, the ki- they're using, this, this shit is so pathetic that they're using the kids to promote agendas now, you feel me? They're not using adults. Yeah. They're trying to use high schoolers and middle schoolers to promote them to walk out of school. I thought this was y'all indoctrination camp. When I was coming up, they was trying to keep us in school. You feel me? They was trying to keep us in school to keep us out, out the streets. So now y'all got kids walking out of school. And it's, and it's okay because it's a political cause? Fuck out of here. No. Right. That shit crazy. And a shame on the parents that's allowing that shit. That's what I talk about. Motherfucking parents right. allowing that goof ass shit. That shit crazy. For real, like, yeah, it's, it's just crazy, like, and like the kids of our generation or my generation there's something wrong with them definitely but it's more so what the parents allow as well yeah. like my mom is 46 mm-hmm. she was born in 1960 uh, don't, don't say no date don't say no date oh my bad my bad yeah but my mom is older compared to some people some kids that I know like their parents being in their 30s like, I remember in middle school, this girl, she was like 12 or something like that. She told me her mom was 29. I was like, hey, like, mom is young as hell. But also, like, I've noticed when kids and parents are closer in age, they tend to look at each other more as brother and uh, sister. Buddy, buddy. Yeah, yeah, rather than parent and child, you know. And it's just, it's just crazy. 
Yeah, even like, it's, it, it's like that. That's what dysfunctional. That's the extreme dysfunctional, you know, part of it. You know, of of the right. ages being closer, and you know, the immaturity levels, and not necessarily like you can have parents that have kids at an early age who will be mature, but for the most part, they will be immature because they feel as if they're still in their youth. You feel me? Because they had the kid at a young age. They'll be like, "Oh, I had this kid at seventeen. I'm still seventeen, even though they're twenty nine. You feel me? So exactly. you know, it, it's like that. I, I feel what you're saying, and what I believe plays a major part in this generation is the social media aspect of it. A lot this generation, like, like I, I used to always say, when I was coming up around twelve, like twelve and thirteen, I was even twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. I was never in the house, like, not at night, like you know what I'm saying. It it was not. On Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, bro, we out till 12, we out till 11, you feel me? At, like, young ages, you feel me? But I'm from the hood, so it's different. So, but I, I knew that after that, the kids after that, like a good six, seven years later, they in the house at 12. They, you know what I'm saying? They in the house, they in front of the computer, they on their phone in the house. Like, it's like that. So I thought about that shit. I was like, okay, they're more to be in you know um we were more susceptible to be um consumed by the streets because we were outside at those ages but kids now they're more um more vulnerable to social media that's in front of them and the things that's in front of them so if they see in school walkouts then it's more easy for them to be like okay even though they don't research david hall you feel me that little ass boy that's a damn cia agent they don't research him and shit like that, even though they have the accessibility to do that, they don't. But the fact that they follow behind walking out of school because they seen another school do it, mm-hmm. that comes from social media. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. the influence, because they get that little bald-headed dyke girl up there, the little stud girl. Where? Where? You need to walk out. You need to do this. And she go out there, and, and all the other kids, they, you know what I'm saying, they choose to walk out. You feel me? So, you know, it's crazy. You know who I'm talking about, though, right? Yeah, I seen her little yeah, ball-headed Yeah, a little ball-headed girl. Yeah, a uh, Jane Doe-looking-ass girl. You feel me? Yeah. But, um... <laughs> she dead. But, nah, yeah, you know, shit like that going on. But, yeah, what else you want to talk about, you know? Um, throw some topics at me. I can't really think of J. Cole, you know, the message. The message of that album. What you think of it? Oh, my thing is, um, I've been a J. Cole fan since I was, like, 11. And so I kind of came up with some different, like, I listened to all his albums all the way through yeah. and everything. And, like, uh, I get what you, like, I'll be looking at your videos when you say something about J. Cole. I can't even get mad at you because I see where you're coming from rather than the people that just say on his trash, you know. Like, what you mean? Go in further detail. I want to hear your perspective on why you. Oh, like, the, uh, like how he, how he signed to the uh the the camel in the three piece. Camel in the three piece suit, yeah. Yeah, I thought about that. and I was like, damn, like he really signed to like this, this fucking evil dude. Yeah. Like, and it's fucked up because I feel like J Cole is genuinely a good person. He just in a fucked up position. Of course, and I think his image is well. Like I see that it's real. Like you, uh, think of a person. Like people think he, uh, J Cole is fake woke and all this shit. I can't see it like that because you know when he started wearing his dress free form and he started um like just not wearing jewelry and shit like that. He doing it for years. You gotta think about it when you see him in pictures. When you see him out, he's still dressing like that. So it's not an act. You feel me? He's actually living that shit. So when I see that. I see like damn. In my mind I see it as like he's letting the um the world is like on his shoulders, the 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 effects of society and seeing that and then seeing this album cover and then hearing that song that I just heard at you know, ATM. I'm I'm putting it together now, like I, I said it before that even I even heard the song, but you know, I put it together like he's not really like, you know, he wants to say something. But he can't because he signed to the camel in the three piece. He want to get as raw as he used right. to get. You feel me? He really want to say something, but he can't. He knows that he can't. He don't want to lose it and be a target. And, you know what I'm saying? But he going to say yeah. it in a certain way. So right. I realized that, you know, that's why I fell back on talking on a lot of things about him. 
because I understood his situation, you feel me? And for him to even co-sign a Hillary, like, I'm with her. Like, nigga, fuck out of oh. here, my nigga. Like, you think we slow or something, my nigga? You, feel me? you think we didn't forget about the predator shit she said, bro? And you up there performing for her? But I, he did that because he's aligned himself to be under the control of the camel in a three-piece suit, you feel me? So, that's why he has to do that shit the way he does. And... I give him respect on, you know, because this is the same nigga that made Michael, you feel me? It's called, I think it's yeah. called Ghetto Little Nigga. It's called Ghetto Little Nigga, you feel me? That song. Yeah. And for me, growing up in the hood, that song that, you know, like, J. Cole is one of the few. You know, you got the biracial rappers, right? You got your Drakes. You got your Logics. You got those. But they don't, they don't have that, um they don't have that perception of what it's like to grow up in the hood and they can't execute it right. You feel me? They don't understand for real. So when I heard J. Cole Michael, I didn't find out J. Cole was biracial till like, what, about two years ago, two, three years ago. And I, w I was like, damn. But, you know, for him to even have that perception of what we go through in that song Ghetto Little Nigga or, you know, Michael is what they call it. At, at 2011, and two, now he, that song came out 2009. That's when I knew right. dude was for real. So, he can't, those emotions of how he, you know, delivered that song, it doesn't change now that he's in this position of, you know, um, fame. He's still the same humble individual who feels the same about what's going on in the hood. But now he sees this bullshit like Lil Pump dissing him and shit like that. Then he has to yeah. respond. He has to respond because it's, it's ignorant, you feel me? Because the people supported it. You got to remember when, when Lil Pump said, fuck J. Cole, all of the other people rocked with it. They thought it was funny, you feel me? Now, just like I said in my video, imagine a time in which niggas say, fuck Nas, you feel me? Like, fuck Nas, that nigga trash. Like a nigga like, nigga like uh, MC Hammer. Fuck Nas, nigga trash. You feel me? You be like, nigga, you talking? You, you talking, bro? You, nigga? Hammer time with the pants, my nigga? I know you ain't talking. You feel me? So, that's how that shit would be looked at back in like 1996. Nigga would get trash the fuck out of here get him on get him gone get him out the culture now that shit is laughed at like <laughs> yeah fuck j cole you feel me right so of course j cole gotta come back and i heard the atm song I, I, first thing i thought when i first heard the song i was like okay it's giving me um kendrick damn vibes you feel me when i first heard it like be humble i was like oh no nah, he ain't going that route then as, as right. the video went on the second verse he said that hook with more passion you know, and then I started to get the message, like, when he, it's it's really a dark video, you feel me, it got dark themes to it, yeah. I had seen, like, when the eyes are twirling, and then the people are rising, like, they getting high, you feel me, and he's showing the people consumed by that, and then the second verse, where he's showing the old people gambling, playing poker and shit, and it's like, you know, people are addicted to gambling, it's about a lot of addictions out here that people are addicted to, and then he showed a person, he's spitting at the same time, Showing a person giving his arm and leg to get the little car and shit. Now he disabled. He got the girl. He got the car. He got the fame. Then at the end of it all, he um dies and you know a dollar bill fall on him. It's like he sold his soul just for that little little piece of money. You feel me? Like it's deep. Yeah, it's deep. That that nigga video deep and he directed it himself with, along with someone else. But the lyrics as well. So a lot of people have opinions about it. But I fucks with it. I fucks with it. the cover itself is classic. He did his fucking thing, you feel me? He did his fucking thing, and um, it, I'm going to keep it 100. A lot of niggas going to get mad at me, but I'm going to say this. That nigga Kendrick fucked up. Uh, J. Cole's image is a lot more authentic than Kendrick's. I say that, and the legacy will be, you know what I'm saying? The legacy will be Cole is better than Kendrick. Just off of this album alone, niggas can say For Your Eyes Only is whack. But guess what? If you compare For Your Eyes Only to Damn, then I'll take for your eyes only. I'm going to just keep it 100. You feel me? Yeah, me so, too. I, you know what I'm saying? What you say? Yeah, me too. Uh, me too, honestly. Like, I, I ain't a lot like Kendrick, but, like, when I look at how he moves versus how J. Cole moves, J. Cole moves a lot more strategic yeah. and a lot more, uh, a lot, a whole lot better than Kendrick. Because Kendrick seemed like he just want to do that pop shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, J. Cole, he doesn't aim for number one hits or uh, uh, club, you know, yeah, like billboard, that. top 100. He don't top 10. He don't aim for that. I fucks with right. that. 
You know what I'm saying? And that's what I said. I told somebody. And I said, when you look at J. Cole right now, when this album dropped, when KOD dropped, it wasn't trending on Twitter. When he dropped that ATM video, it wasn't trending on, on, on YouTube. You feel me? At the same time, he dropped the video the same day as three things. And I'm going to get into all three of these things on this podcast because I want people to realize something. But number one, the first thing he had dropped was his song, KO, you know, ATM, the video for it. The second thing that had dropped was Oriana Grande, her video to some old bullshit, pop shit. It's, yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, it's number two at trending at, at, on YouTube when I saw it. It could have been number one, but I didn't catch it. So it has 11 million views so far. I mean, the last time I checked was a couple hours ago. And it had a million and a quarter million likes a million and a quarter million likes in that amount of time j cole dropped his it was out for nine hours two million views a hundred thousand likes now to me the more important message of a song in artistry would be somebody that's writing late lyrics somebody that's giving you a picture of what's going on in this generation but yet you have oriana grande doing 10 not almost 10 more million plus views and almost a million more likes, if not more, a million more likes on our video. So that shows what the people are interested into and where this culture is going. But pop music, you know, who I don't, I don't know. The appeal about a person like Oriana Grande is the appeal of like I should roast Big Sean for that too, because he got with her yeah. for you know just being on that corny shit. Like I don't fuck with you, corniest shit ever, corniest shit ever. That's why people don't even mention him tripping off of people mentioning him in the top three spitters. Bro, that nigga is garbage, my nigga. Oh, they tripping. You know what I'm saying? Huh? I said they tripping mention him in top they three. All, they was doing that for a while, trying to put him in that in that league with, you know, a Kendrick, trying to make them battle. I'm like, I'm not even a Kendrick fan, my nigga, but Kendrick will eat that little nigga up, big son. He will, bro, don't even do that, my nigga. I'm not even a big Kendrick fan, you feel me? So, if I'm saying that, then it should mean something, bro. I giggity giggity, I quagmire, bro. I don't want to hear that kitty ass weak ass Kendrick. I mean, not you know, Big Sean corny ass bars, bro. That nigga got some of the corniest bars ever. But I don't know why I'm going on a rant about him. Hold on. The third part that dropped that day, the third video, was DJ Academics had dropped a video. You feel me? To his video, his song Blues Clues, some super corny chat nigga shit, and he's doing it to try to be a parody, but he he's serious. Niggas trying to say it's a joke. Nah, that nigga's serious. He's really trying to come. He's doing what, you know, look, J. Cole was just talking about on his album. All that goofy shit. But people are supporting the corny shit now, you feel me? So, yeah, J. Cole, he he spoke up in this generation. See, what Kendrick didn't do with all of his hype is give you a a straight up um, analysis of what's going on in hip-hop. And the drug culture, you feel me? J. Cole has done right. that. J. Cole has done that. He didn't give you... No, I don't want to bash Kendrick. I ain't even finna do that. I ain't even finna say that. But, um, you know, he gave you what people would look down uh, 10 years down the line and be like, look, this album cover right here, like with Tupac's Machiavelli theory, you see Pac hung up against the cross. You feel me? Like he's being crucified because everybody was trying to kill him at that time. And they did kill him. So that's what made that so iconic, you feel me? So you have that, and you have this. It's it's a classic, classic artwork that will be remembered for a long time. And the album as well. Dude did his thing. I can't even hate, you know what I'm saying? And he didn't go back to his Michael days, but he did in a certain way. This album isn't meant for, like, boom, bap, beats. It's for the message, you feel me? Because it's more deeper than what people think it is. So, yeah, that's just my little thoughts. What else you want to talk about? Oh, uh, uh, when you mentioned Ariana Grande, I don't know if you know, like, really talk about this, but did you hear about the, uh... Um, heard of it. Yeah, that was some... You've heard of, you, you watched, um, Black Child? Did you watch Black Child when he had his YouTube? Um, no. Oh, uh, his YouTube got taken down? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it got, it got taken down, but yeah, yeah. He, oh, I remember you mentioned that. I never heard of him, too. Oh, yeah, he used to do a lot of deep videos talking about that, you know. I thought I thought you would be able to watch that, but yeah, he he talked about that. You know, I can't talk about things like that on here, but I just mentioned it in, in short details. You feel me? I'll, I'll edit some stuff out, but they'll know what we're talking about. You feel me? 
So, yeah. but yeah, that that whole thing gets done, you know, ritualistically. You feel me? That's a ritualistic thing that they do, setting up the dates and you know, numerology. All of that plays a part in um, energy harnessing. You know what I'm saying? So, That's yeah, yeah. But um, what else? I mean, you know, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Oh. Um. You got anything to talk about? Cause I must be high or no, something. <laughs> it's four twenty. You must be high or something. Oh no, I'm not. I wish, but no. Oh. <laughs> no. But yeah, um, shit. I don't. I don't know. I mean, what else is going on in the Schmip Schmop? I mean, I don't. I don't know. Oh, oh man, I'm sorry. Okay, so I got a question about, um, have you ever mentioned the, uh, have you ever mentioned Buddhism on any of your, any of your channels? No, I have not. Okay, I didn't think so. So, uh, I went to the Buddhist temple on Sunday, and one thing I noticed, it was, it was controlled by the vanillas. But I tried to ignore that, and I tried to, like, pay attention to the message and everything. Yeah. It's actually pretty interesting, like... I believe in meditation, I believe in peace and love and things like that. Uh, and I and it's a actually it's a it's a unity temple where part of the church uh, part of the temple is Christian, another part is like a Buddhist one, which was interesting. Cool. Uh, one thing I noticed in like Christianity, even the Bible says to meditate. Yeah. Like Christians overlook that part. Yeah. And they meditation is an evil thing because you're tapping into a different frequency which is your higher self and a Christianity teach you only focus on God only focus on God but they don't understand that God lives within us as well if there's a creator the creator lives within us because yeah. the creator created us you know yep and also to add on to what you're saying I'd like to say that the Bible talks about the pineal gland when they talk about the lamps being lit, you feel me? Mm -hmm. They talk about the lamps being lit or your lamp is not shining bright enough. They're talking about yeah. the pineal gland. And also they mention that right before mentioning meditation. So, mm -hmm. you know, the thing about skipping over the meditation thing in the Bible is done because preachers will skip over that. Because what, what you'll realize is that people need another person to interpret things for them. So that's why we have teachers. That's why we have preachers that's why we have pimps that's why we have a government because they feel as if you can't govern yourself or you can't do things on your own and you won't read to find up on these things so you need someone's help and to do this for you you feel me so yeah the preacher is put into position to pick and choose what verses to look at he sees the verses about you know the um the destroying of babies and you know god ordering babies to be killed and um, women raped and sliced up for in, being in the favor of a man and you know all of those things and you know the verses like slaves obey your masters there's no way you can defend verses like that but yet if you have exactly. a preacher if you have a preacher that skips over it then everything is fine and dandy so that's what the preacher are for you feel me so you know a lot of Christians are brainwashed and they do no research they just you know they just they, they group think they group think that's all yeah so yeah that's Buddhism Go ahead. Oh, which, oh, I was going to say, because I was uh, on my Facebook page, uh, had some Christians on there, and I had posted, uh, uh, the Blue Letter Bible is a good, it's like blueletterbible.com or dot org, and I was like, oh, that's a good tool to use to understand the Bible in its original uh, language, Hebrew and Greek, and somebody was like, Oh, I don't focus on that. I only focus on the letters in red in the Bible. We're talking about what Jesus quoted. I'm like, well, you dumb as hell. I was thinking like, that's dumb as hell to only focus on the Bible in English when it was written in like two different languages other than English. And like, obviously, you're not a true Christian if you're not willing to dig deeper into what you believe in and what you read. You know, yeah. if I read true like that don't, that don't make sense. yeah that's that's true that's that's real ignorant from the people but you know i expect that from religious people honestly i expect that 
you know. So it, it doesn't really surprise me that they re respond like that. I've I've met people that, you know, only read New Testament. You feel me? And want to avoid Old Testament like it never existed. You feel me? Like right. all of that war and all of that killing and like, come on now, my guy. We ain't finna do that, bro. We finna read this whole thing. We finna analyze the whole thing, my nigga. We ain't finna pick and choose all the good of him turning water to wine and all of this. Which is just photosynthesis, okay. you feel me? The process of photosynthesis, which is the sun, exactly. you feel me? The sun turning grape, you know, grape vines into grape, you know, wine. So, they know. Exactly. They really know what's up. They just playing. Exactly. Mm. Like, the Bible is, so, uh, I look at it as a book of wisdom, if you truly, truly understand it. Like, even with the, when you talked about the lamps, uh, it's the scripture of Matthew 6, 22, and it's talking about Sinai be full of of light that your whole body be full of light and that's mm -hmm. the whole reason why i got my uh, tattoo uh that's in greek is no seeds that means to know or knowledge that was my whole reason to get that because of what that scripture truly meant yeah mm -hmm. that was talking about you, you said really the pineal gland right they're talking about spirituality with that verse right yeah mm -hmm. yeah i know that i know that you you know the real verses, you know what the real, you know the meaning behind it is, you know. I don't I don't see that there's nothing wrong with the Bible. See, people think that I'm anti-Bible. No, I'm anti-Christianity. I'm anti-religion, my nigga. Like, people want to pick and choose what to do. Nah, you can't force people into that because what, what was Jesus himself? He wasn't a Christian. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. He didn't preach for people That's to true. even become Christians. There was no Christianity. You feel me? And, and to, if people want to get technical, that wasn't even his name, you feel me? If you people exactly. want to get technical, you know what I'm saying? And it, it, we, we can go even deeper than that to say he wasn't even a real person. He was really used as a symbol for something, you feel me? So, you know, it's, it's, it's up for people to do real research, you know what I'm saying? And, and the fact that people follow blindly behind that proves that the government will be in power until people become individuals and that's what i try to push on people to be individuals and not followers of others you know what i'm saying it, it's crazy i like that you got your own mind though you feel me like i can see that individuality huh what you was gonna say i said i appreciate that yeah for sure but um yeah what else what else is there to talk about oh one thing is uh my English teacher. Um, Don't say she, her name. Okay. Oh, yeah. You smarter than that. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah I was about to. No. Oh, you was she, about to? Oh, no. I was like, I was trying to think of what I was uh, Oh, okay. What she said earlier today. Oh, she was talking about how um, people, like what you mentioned earlier, people uh, would rather somebody else lead them to something. Because we're reading Brave New World right now. Mm -hmm. And people. Even the people in the book would rather be controlled rather than to think for themselves and follow things for themselves. And I had mentioned how in religion, people leave religion and then go right back to it because they don't feel comfortable. And like, I, I came to that point in my life. I was like, I was thinking, am I doing the right thing? I was raised as a Christian. I was like, am I doing the right thing? And I was like, maybe I should go back. And something my mom said, no, you better not go back. And so I didn't go back to it. I just deeper into what it is. Okay. Okay, that's what's up. That's crazy. But, um, I understand what you're saying, and, um, I've been through the same thing, like, when it comes to, you know, fighting religion, but my thing about it was is that it was my fear of quote-unquote hell, you feel me? Exactly. That concept is what kept me from leaving fully. So when I actually said, you know what, man, I'm a fearless ass nigga. I had it in my mind, like, you know, I'm such a rebel, bro. I'm finna do deep research on this shit and find out what it's about. Once I found out, Janehe, I think it's what it's called, Janehe, and you got Sheol. Those are two translations they have Hebrew words from the Bible that they turned into hell. That actually meant a pit, a grave, silence. You feel me? It didn't mean yeah, not, none of that other shit that they was talking about. You feel me? It, they got verses in the Bible that said, Sheol is a pit that is as, uh, that is like a sleeping baby. Well, that don't sound like hell to me. Exactly. Well, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on now. Those are verses in the Bible. So, it's, 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 
that's what uh made it official for me of not fearing that shit. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. That remind me it's this uh it's this uh Instagram page called Debatogram, I think. It uh it said it asked, Is hell real? And people have to vote yes or no and then leave a comment or why they believe it is or why they believe it is. This dude I said no because can't nobody prove to me that hell exists no matter if they told me they sent it for themselves. That still doesn't prove it for me. Mm-hmm. This dude uh, hit me with a comment, he's like, Yes, hell is real. Because I've done deep research on it. I said, but you still can't prove that it, it don't matter how much research you've done on uh, it being real. That that doesn't prove to me that it's real in the way that you think of it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And what I want to say about that is that somebody going to come in the comment section trying to, you know, eat through your point. But I'm going to add on to it so they can't do that. There's people that have tried DMT. There have people, you know, matter of fact, let me put it like this. Near-death experiences, NDEs, people have done research on that and saw that, you know, people have um, those, the DMT rush into their brain, which causes hallucinations before your death to calm you down. And a lot of people say they see demons, they see all of this crazy stuff. Well, what you have to realize is that that will only be brought to you what you believe in. You know what I'm saying? What you believe in shall be brought to you, just like the laws of the universe. What you accept shall be a reality. What you thinketh, so it beeth. You feel me? The Bible says right. that as well. It's talking about manifesting. You feel me? And when they talk about faith, they're talking about having faith in what you believe in. So, when people talk about they seeing demons before they die, that's because you believe that you lived the evil life. That's because you believe that you weren't worthy enough to go to quote-unquote heaven. You feel me? And for the people that actually saw good things before they died, they saw the light and they saw all the doves and the angels reaching out to them that's because they thought that they did good you know what i'm saying that's what they accepted in their life they're conscious you feel me so even though all of the dmt does is just take away from your your um experience of this so-called death the pain of that you know uh experience that will break you free and then after that you shall choose whether you want to follow the light or the darkness you go to the light reincarnation moon matrix be reincarnated and rebirth born into this light once you follow the light you'll get born into the light of the doctor's operation room and be a screaming baby back into this fucking hell matrix you feel me and if you follow the darkness you'll be able to create if you have a cognitive mind on what you want to do then that's something deeper you feel me they talk about that in deeper detail as well and also i talk about saturn and his cube right well if you talk about Solomon going to you know God's um heaven quote unquote heaven he talks about God's measurements on on the um God's kingdom of heaven in cubits he uses cubits you feel me to measure God's you know they put it in detail it's done on purpose man it's, it's deep you know what I'm saying it's crazy but yeah right. anything else I'm just rolling with the topics man I'm just rolling okay. with I don't That's know cool. I don't know I was wondering, uh, do you think that it can ever be complete peace in the universe where it's all positivity and no negativity, or do you think it has to be that balance for the first time? Uh, you answered your own question. I didn't want. To, I wanted to say yeah, without humans, I would say yeah, it would be peace on earth without humans. But no, it wouldn't, cause fucking lions run around killing motherfuckers left and right. And, you feel me? Angry monkeys marching. You feel me? It'll be all type of crazy shit. I can't even say that. So, right, right. Um, without humans, I think it has to be a balance. You feel me? I think it has to be a balance. You got the monkeys that you can teach. You got the lions that you can tame. You got the humans that you can teach. You got the humans that you can tame. And you got the ones that you can't. You feel me? You got the ones that's out here just running wild and you know, ruthless, and, you know, you have animals that are running wild and ruthless, so I think there has to be a balance. I wish that there was not a, matter of fact, I can't say I wish there was not a balance, because that can mean if it's all positive on this earth, that means that it could be all bad on another earth, you feel me? So those are alternate universes and multiverses and stuff like that, so I could see how that could play a part in, in, uh, not wanting that. I think we in the best part we can be in, honestly. With this balance, I think, yeah. 
Nah, nah, nah. I want to be on a, I'd be on the on all positive side. I think I would be on the, you know, the good side of that, that earth. But yeah. that was a good question, though. That was a good question. Thank you. Yeah, because I was thinking about that. I was like, even for a battery to charge, it has to be a uh, a balance of positive and negative energy. Yeah. Battery yep. to charge. I was thinking, like, just the whole reason why all of this thing, uh, exists is because of the balance. Yep. AC, DC current, you feel me? That's the positive and negative energy. You got sine and cosine. You know what I'm saying? It's it's there, you feel me? The male and female is there for it to be like that. The yin and the yang is definitely there for there to be a balance. So, it makes sense. It definitely makes sense. That's crazy. Yeah, you, you sure brought something up. I didn't even think about that. The batteries, you know, positive and a negative. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> uh-huh. It's like, yeah, I try to, like, I try to relate natural things to spiritual things as well, or even like scientific things and spirituality. Yeah. So it makes sense to me. Yeah, and they there. They there. They're most definitely there. When you get into quantum mechanics and, you know, um, quantum physics, you'll definitely see the um, the binary codes, the, you know, just like the split theory. You feel me? They have the, the double slit theory of, of uh, quantum mechanics that proves that our eyes our minds change reality you feel me? if we don't look at something then it will move crazy the atoms of it will move crazy the electrons will just be wild but when we turn to it focus our attention to it it will create a form it will be in place so like you know like you know how we have the sims game right we got sims uh-huh. game and it's sims is short for simulation but what is the game about human life you feel me you know what I'm saying? So they're basically telling us, just like with the Matrix movie, you feel me? It's, it's the same thing. They're telling us life is a simulation and that our mind is the most powerful thing we have. So that's why, you know, when Cardi B drops an album like Invasion of Privacy, they're talking about invading your privacy to focus on what's on your mind, not what you're doing, not who you messing with. Not if you working out, not what you eating, you feel me? They focus on what's on your mind, you feel me? That's what their invasion of privacy is all about. So, with that being known, it's like, those deeper things exist. Just like with the Fibonacci sequence and all of the other ancient, you know, sacred symbols. They all have meaning and they all create electrical currents and give off a certain energy. That's why they focus so much on putting symbols in front of us. Like, even, you know, the Sprite can. I thought I had a Sprite can around me, but I don't. But, you know, it's the yin and the yang on the Sprite can. You feel me? They showing the balance between the signs. It's there. And I think for Pepsi as well, if I'm not mistaken. And for Pepsi. But, yeah. Yeah. Just something to think about. Oh, yeah, it was Oh, yeah, that reminds me when they, they try to see what's on our minds. I've noticed on Facebook, like, it says, what's on your mind? And the, yeah. big, and the Facebook it plays a key role in uh, seeing, play, playing on our emotions. They even admitted to that. They play on our emotions by the things that we post and who we have on our friends list and things yeah. like that. And they give you advertisements about what you think about and what you, you know what I'm saying? They, they, like, I've seen, I, I think I've seen something one time that was like, I had thought about something. I didn't type it down. I didn't type it down. I didn't text it to nobody or nothing. It was just something I thought about. And then I got a promotion for it. As soon as I logged in on Facebook, I was like, yo, what the fuck? Hell no. It was too much of a coincidence. And I was like, that's when I started paying attention for real. Like, for, even though I knew that they were spying on me, but it just, it, left a mark on me like who would be dumb enough to try some shit like that you feel me like who would be dumb enough to put that out there for me to get advertised do y'all think i'm that dumb was that a glitch in y'all system to try me of all people you can try that on somebody stupid but not me being aware but i noticed that and it does say what's on your mind because they you know hell that's what um mark um i wanted to say something else mark um cyborg cyborg you feel me was in court uh-huh. for for uh you know just spying on us and releasing information on facebook people you feel me that's what he was in court for so 
we know what's up with Facebook, you feel me, and releasing information and quote-unquote fake news and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? It's wild, but, yeah, it's, it's definitely mind tricks being played with this shit. You know what I'm saying? But it, it don't stop nothing. It don't stop nothing. You know, the mind is out here, you know. And I've seen that a lot of the youngins that, that listen to me, they starting to understand this, too. I fucks with it. I fucks with what I did so far. But, yeah, they, they most definitely trying to shut me down when it comes to speaking oh, yeah. on these things. Mo- most definitely. Like, it, I've never seen nothing like this, bro. Like, on a video. Like, I think about it like this, man. I got flagged for a video about Chief Keith. Now, you know, for criticizing him. Now, this is a person that talks about smoking on dead people. Dead teenagers, you feel me? Super gangbanger, super beady, super this and that, holding guns in his videos. But yet his fans are super sensitive and don't want him critiqued and they flag down channels and videos. And I'm thinking right. about it. How the hell does that even culminate? How does that even culminate to even making sense? So I thought about that. I was like, it can't be them. And it's also something else I wanted to mention, but I'm not going to mention on here. But a certain, I hmm. I said I see. Yeah, yeah, it's certain individuals on here that I'm not gonna mention that have flagged my videos, and they shall soon be exposed. But you know, it's like for all of this that goes on, what is the solution of what is the solution? I take that L. I didn't mean to say what's the solution. I meant uh-huh. to say, um. What sense does it make to censorship to be censored for your voice? You feel me? Like, I don't agree with that Tupac hoax channel and him calling Tupac gay and all that shit. But do I go to that nigga channel flagging? Did I tell people to go flag his channel? No, because underneath it all, I feel as if he should be able to speak what he says. And I should be able to clown what he believes as well. You feel me? So, what's the point of a motherfucker? You know what I'm saying? Because... If people believe that, then I can clown them for believing in it. Just like they can clown me for what I believe, but just expect a response. You feel me? So, if people played it like that, then there would be no fucking censorship. There would be no need for censorship flagging and hate speech and harassment and all that weird ass shit. Bro, come on now, man. This shit crazy, but it don't, It you know, it's a whole new generation. And I see that a lot with this generation. They real, they super sensitive. Super sensitive. I think that comes with, I think that comes with growing up with in a single mother household, along with growing up in the house. You feel me? Like it's it's you know if you grow up in a single mother household, but yet you have old heads on the street and you have older dudes on the streets. You know what I'm saying? It's you have a different experience. But if you just grow up in a single mother household and you always in a house, like I believe they're a lot more sensitive, a lot more emotional, cause. Yeah. It, it don't make you know my my generation was emotional too, but that was emotional to a certain extent. This one is emotional to a weird, illogical, super imbalanced. You know what I'm saying? And it's done on purpose. They they have and socially they engineered it that way. What you say? Yeah, and they want to be depressed. Like my anxiety is kicking. In. My depression is kicking. Like they say shit be, like that. Yeah. I, I've never. I, man, if we would have heard, we had. Look, I don't even want to mention this, but. We had this little white boy in my continuation school. He used to act all depressed and shit, bro. Shut your weak ass up, my nigga. We going to the projects, bro. Niggas is shooting up our hoods. We can't come outside at night. Bro, you from fucking Torrance, my nigga. You got mommy at home. You go home and play video games, bro. You want to show, you want to see anxiety, bro? Nigga, smack the hell out of him and tell him fight back, bro. And you know what I'm saying? And he would see that it's not a fucking game. You talking about some, I'm, I'm depressed, I'm anxiety. Shut your weak ass up, bro. Shut your right. weak ass up, my nigga. Like, what what the hell is wrong with you, bro? Niggas is shooting up our fucking hoods at night. We can't go play outside. You go outside. You play right. video games. You online gaming. You you know what I'm saying? Like, come on now, my nigga. This shit crazy. Mama, a teacher and all this shit. Just, just right. people just don't know. People just don't know how good they be having it. But yet always talking about depression and all of this. I understand it to a certain extent. Like, you know, the world is having pressure on you and you're not, they're not preparing you for what's going to happen or, you know, what the future will be for your career and, you know, things like that. But to put it to the point of 
being depressed and anxiety. I, I don't get it, bro. I don't. I see that. You see, I'm gonna I'm 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 keep it 100. I see a lot of females that like say things like, "What do they say on their posts, man?" I, I'm trying to think, bro. They be saying in their bios and shit like, "I'm goal orientated. I'm focusing on my goals." A lot of people, quote unquote, are goal orientated, but yet when they find out that it's you know it's not as attainable as they thought it was then they become depressed and in a slump you feel me a lot of people i see it a lot but yet i don't see that transferring over to the communities if you're so goal orientated then the community should be better there shouldn't be single mothers running around here there shouldn't be badass little kids running around here you know what i'm saying gang banging and you know selling drugs and getting caught up with weapons and shit but it is so who is really goal orientated out here? Where are your little brothers at? Like I don't know, man. That shit crazy. I be asking questions like that because people say all of this, but yeah, we don't see the the um actual the results of all of this shit that they be saying. But you know, it's crazy. But yeah, any other questions? I, I was gonna mention like I grew up in a single mother household, and it taught me a lot. But I was like, if I was to ever have kids, I would not want them up in that situation yeah. and I don't plan to ever have kids because of this world but I would not want that for my kids because um, it's just like it, it, it's not a balance in the household when it's just mom raising the kids like the mother is the number one nurturer mm -hmm. but you well, still need that hold balance. on hold on since you're here I'm gonna break some knowledge with you that I wasn't gonna okay. bring on here all right okay. so you know how I always used to say things like Oh, having kids on this earth. I don't want kids on this earth because, you know, this earth is hell and all of this. Well, I thought about it. I thought about it. I was like, people are going to reincarnate regardless of whether or not I have kids or not. You feel me? Kids are going to, people are going to reincarnate into situations regardless. Why not have children and teach them? Like, you know, on YouTube right now, I'm teaching kids that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Kids that ain't got no, um, no fucking person to tell them these things anyways you feel me youngins like 12 13 14 15 year olds niggas like i'm they, they big brother you feel me i've been big brothers to my little brothers to my little cousins and shit you feel me and my little sisters i was big brother then and i'm still big brother but i've always had this mentality so to think about it like okay bringing a kid in this world if he does reincarnate he gonna reincarnate anyways why not have a kid that you're gonna reincarnate with and give him this knowledge to understand this world Anyways, I, I'm starting to see it like that, but I, I'm not, sh I'm not 100% sure on it. But it, it's a thought, you feel me? It's a yeah. thought, like you know, it's different from what I thought before. Like, nah, no kids, no, none of this, just none. This earth is hell and all this. But I thought about it, like kids are gonna reincarnate regardless of you know if I have kids or not. They're gonna reincarnate. They're gonna reincarnate in situations that could have been prevented. They had the soul to, you know, um, progress and be a leader. They have the rebellious spirit. They have the spirits of, of a leader. If I have a kid and that kid becomes that, he will have the right teacher and that right, you know, path. So I thought about that for a while. Like, it makes sense. But there's also the other, you know, the other mind, too, that sees it for what it is. And, you know, the the preparations of these situations of, you know, risking your life to protect that child. You feel me? And nurturing it and, you know, um, being there for it mentally physically, emotionally, and spiritually, you feel me, to where right. it gains an understanding of this, this world for real, but understanding that that child can go its own way as well. It can change, you know, and be like, man, look, I, I grew up in that spirituality stuff, but look, I, I want to be a worldly person, you feel me? That can happen as well. It happens, you feel me? <laughs> it happens a lot. But, yeah, it, you know, I think about a lot of stuff. I, I'm a real thinker, like, but... Yeah, that's that's basically almost everything. Yeah. yeah. Cause I hella thought that I was like, if I do end up having a kid, I know that I would teach them the things that I wasn't taught when mm -hmm. I was younger and everything. And I was like, I I feel like I'll be a great parent. Uh, as far as like with spirituality and teaching them things that I wasn't taught growing up and even nurturing them. But then, like you said, I was like thinking like. No, I see this world for what it is. Yeah. It's just like I don't know. I just I got I still got time to think about it. All that I mean, I may have them, I may not, but like definitely not right now. I wouldn't plan on having. Them.
Yeah, you know? most definitely, most definitely. So, um, this is the longest live stream I've had. You know, the longest interview. Uh -huh. You feel me? It's been cool though. You feel me? And you were a great guest. And I hope the subs, you feel me, appreciate the homegirl Andy Nicole for coming through on the podcast. So Thank if you, you got, Thank you for that. yeah, yeah, <laughs> you got anything <laughs> else, tell them where to follow you at, you feel me, and all that good stuff. I mean, if y'all want to check me out, my YouTube channel is Andy Nicole Official, spelled A-N-D-I space Nicole, N-I-C-O-L-E space official. If you don't know how to spell official, you need to go back to school. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, if you want to check me out, I, I make videos about consciousness, uh, regular life, just just different things that never come to mind. So yeah, mm. thank you, College Q, for having me. Bro. All right, you, you know, good. Stay with your video. <laughs> you be safe, sis. <laughs> Are right, you too, bro? Thank you. All right, you're welcome.